and I'm just going to start to move around the room. I'm going to move around every single person in the room and I am going to tap just one person on the shoulder. Now it could be anyone, it could be anyone at all who is our murderer. Open your eyes, please. OK, we have a murderer. Our learning intentions for today are to understand how Prospero changes between the two key scenes. And when you are winked at, you all of a sudden drop to the floor, OK? The difference is, when you drop to the floor, you will be seeing a line from The Tempest. They are all lines that the character of Prospero says. Some of them are from the first key scene and some of them are from the second key scene. Use this space. Deeper than did ever plummet sound, I'll drown my beef. Oh, we've had a death, ladies and gentlemen. We've had I a death. I thy aerial. Thou shall miss thee, but thou shall not have freedom. Thou best knowest what torment I did find thee in. OK, we have had an accusation. If we can hold still, please. Ashley, would you like to repeat your accusation? Tori. OK, was it you, Victoria? It was Victoria. Very well done. Can you say your line again, please? This rough magic I hear of Jim. OK, which scene does that come from? Hannah? The last one. The last one. How do you know that, Hannah? Nice and loud? Because it's when he's going to give up his magic. Again, he's going to give up his magic. How best knows what torment I did find thee in. OK, which scene does that come from, Josh? Is that the first one? Why do you think it's the first one? Because it's when um, Ariel gets released, I think. OK, so he's telling Ariel the torment that he found him in. We've got a contrast between where he's being very cruel to Ariel, reminding him the horrible torment he was in, and when he's given up his magic and letting Ariel go free. How does he change? Hannah? Um, he kind of realises how horrible he's been and that he wants to change his ways. We know that that change happens somewhere at the very start of Act 5, Scene 1, don't we? And try to work out the exact moment within this scene, within this extract, where you think Prospero changes his ways. At the end it says like that if you now be held then your affection would become tender. So I think that reminded Prospero that he's got feelings and then that just triggered it off. And then... Yeah, that's a good idea. So when Ariel says it, it reminds Prospero that he, sh he should really have some feelings, shouldn't he? Does it necessarily have to be on a word or on a line where Prospero changes his mind? No, because it can be in the pause. Like, in the gap between where the person and what they're saying. OK, so it could be that maybe Ariel says something, Prospero has a bit of a think about it, and then makes his mind up. We're going to try to look now at the rhythm within the scene, the heartbeat, the iambic pentameter. Are there any points where that rhythm breaks down and think about why? Hand on heart, OK. Once you've found your heartbeat, OK, if you can just very gently start to beat that out. Are we getting there? OK. In the same fashion as you gave in charge, just as you left them all prisoners, sir. That's a bit funny, isn't it? All prisoners, sir. Doesn't quite fit in, does it? Why do you think Ariel doesn't say that very clearly about them being prisoners? So you can remember that he captured them and, like, had them and they're his, like, as his prisoners, nobody else is just his. OK, so Ariel's trying to really reinforce that to Prospero, isn't he, at that point? Remember. He's trying to really hammer home the fact that Prospero is now keeping people prisoner. That if you now beheld them, your affections would become tender. Dost thou think so, spirit? How does Prospero say that line? Dost thou think so, spirit? He's kind of like saying he's um, Ariel's a spirit, so how should he know? And it's kind of like, why should Prospero listen to him? Because he shouldn't be able to know. But look at Ariel's response there. Mine would, sir, were I human. Mine would, if I was human, I would feel pity. That's important, isn't it? That's very important. And Prospero comes back with, and mine shall. Yeah? Mine would, sir, were I human and mine shall. Do you think it's that quick, his response? Got a lot of heads shaking here. A lot of people said, no, I don't think it's that quick. What do we think happens in between that line and the response? 
It's like he's doubting himself, like, of his actions, what he's done, like, by keeping them prisoner and, like, Ariel's trying to persuade him that he has done wrong, so he's, like, agreeing with him kind of thing. That pause is really where it happens. It doesn't happen in a line, does it? It doesn't happen in something that Prospero or Ariel says. Prospero changes almost off the text, almost just within his own head, doesn't he? Can you see that? Yeah? By looking at the rhythm, we can see that really Shakespeare wants us to put a bit of a pause in there, doesn't he? And so if even you, who has no feelings, you as a spirit can feel pity, then surely I should be feeling pity too. I'm, I'm human. What we're going to do now is to move on and think about why. Why does that change take place? Because there could be several reasons. In your three, the person who is in the middle, or one person who's going to sit in the middle, is Prospero. Person on the left-hand side of Prospero, you are the good side of Prospero's conscience. You want to make Prospero see that he should change, that he should let his prisoners go. On the right-hand side, you are a bad angel. You want Prospero to torture his enemies. You don't want him to change his ways. Prospero, in the middle, you're quite simply going to sit with your eyes closed and you're going to listen to these two sides of the argument. Keep them because if they were bad to you, you should be bad to them back. You should show them what you did, they did to you was wrong. Just always forgive everyone, even if they do wrong. You're torturing the person who you love. Well, you know what's right and wrong. They don't love you, so you shouldn't love them. You should all have an idea, have an experience what it's like to be Prospero for a moment. You should have an idea of what it, the different type of reasons why Prospero actually does change his mind and why he does decide to let his prisoners go. What did it feel like to be Prospero? It actually makes you think about um, what each side of Prospero's mind is thinking of. Which side of the argument for you personally, as Prospero came through strongest? Um, I think it was the the side saying get your revenge because you, when you have to make a decision, it's like you can't be self-absorbed because it's not just you that stole your life, they stole your daughter's childhood and her growing up. And what about the fact that Miranda has fallen in love with Ferdinand, who is the son of one of the prisoners. What kind of thing might be going through Prospero's mind with regard to that? In one way, he'd be getting them back for doing what they did to her, but in another way, he doesn't want to upset her because obviously he's torturing our father and like our father-in-law to be kind of thing. Okay. We're going to have a go now at thinking about this story, the story of Prospero changing. If you are writing about this scene and this particular issue in your exam, you might not necessarily be asked to write it from the point of view of Prospero. So we're going to try telling the story from different points of view. So is where are you? You are going to start off, you're going to start telling the story as if you were Prospero. B's, you're going to tell the story as if you were Ariel. C, you are honest old Gonzalo. D person, you are going to be a television news reporter. So you're telling the story from a very neutral perspective, and off we go. Sigarax eventually dies, and I decided I was going to take over the island because I thought that would be the best thing to do, because Caliban just wouldn't have a clue about how to control the island. B, please! Ariel! Being captured again, it's like it takes your entire life. It, it just takes over everything, and you don't know what to do, and... <coughs> You don't know who you are. OK, you are honest old Gonzalo. And then we suddenly got uh, stuck in a storm and landed on a desert island and split up with other people. And then we've, um, the spirit came. Our D person. Ariel, the name of the spirit, was released. He decided to give Prospero his services for a year and no more. So to finish us off with today, we're actually going to look at how we can take this practical work how we can take all of our fabulous ideas that we've had today and how we can actually translate them into something that looks a little bit like an essay. We're not going to write an essay using pens and paper. We're just going to write an essay verbally. So we've got six groups. Each group is going to be given a section of an essay. 
um, would start off by saying, um, like, what we're talking about, so, like, The Tempest, would say what's changing, like, the dramatic things which everybody, like, which most of, like, the crowd or audience would have liked to see. And like we said there, we're going to mention that the Shakespearean audience liked something that was very dramatic. Yeah. OK, excellent. Um, moving on then, once we've introduced what we're going to say, we're <coughs> going to move on to our second paragraph, which talks about what Prospero's actually like in that first key scene, what type of a person he is in Act 1, Scene 2. In the first key scene, he comes across as very manipulative, which is quite an important part, like, because it's... It's the start of the play and it's good to get an idea of what like, the kind of people they are. And he's, um, he's very aware of his own power and his place on the island. We then move on to our third paragraph where we talk about what Prospero's like at the end of the play in the second key scene. It starts off with him like, having a change of heart and he's, he questions himself and like, he realises magic isn't everything. The next thing to do in our fourth paragraph is the fact that we're going to talk about how that change actually takes place. How does he change and what are the main differences between the scenes? Well, in the first scene he's all in um, power, hungry and, like, it's not himself anymore, he's not human. But in the last scene he's actually reminded that he is human. To really impress an examiner, to really get those high levels, we then need to explain why that change takes place. We would start our fifth paragraph by saying that Prospero actually changed because of what Ariel said to him and the way he said it. He said it to him as if, like, he felt sympathy for all the prisoners and if a spirit felt sympathy for someone, then a human being should. So to round it all off properly, we would need to have a fully developed conclusion as well. OK, and our final group over here... We would go into details about each of the points that we've discussed and then different opinions from, like, different characters, like Prospero, and Miranda and Ariel and then we would give our opinion on whether Prospero did the right thing. Put your hand up if you feel as though you could write an essay or have a good attempt at an essay now in your exam about how and why Prospero changes between those two key scenes. Well done to you, thank you very much. Learning it from a textbook and from boards and stuff, you have to learn it and like the way it was written but at least this way we can take it and interpret it the, as the way we are today. But when you're actually doing something and you're moving about and just doing different stuff, then it's much easier to learn. You can understand the feelings by what they like, by what they see and how they see it. Like when you're given a part to read, you get like excited, like because you know that that's your part, so you can like really appreciate the line and learn the line. So when you get to be different parts, you remember more characters and you remember the people that you've been and what your friends have been. And do you think... Using the new drama techniques, I have developed all sorts of new different ideas and it's really reminded me why I went into teaching in the first place. The opportunity to see students becoming enthusiastic and the fact that you've given them something, you've given them ownership of a text, you've given them confidence, it's really been very, very exciting for me and very, very rewarding as well.